Second half underway then. The teams were level seven times in the first half. Let's see what Kilkenny can do with their opening attack of this second 35 minutes. Up towards Larkor, but it comes this time. It's a Kilkenny. Tipperary team, by the way, where the half-forward line didn't manage to get a score and only had four shots at the target between them during that first half. Kerwick, Callanan and John O'Brien will have to do a little bit better than that. Their work rate has been very, very high. Derek Ling, punished by the referee, has just ticked him for that foul. It's going to be a free to Tipperary and it'll be Conor O'Mahony who will take it. Yeah, Jordan, I just noticed uh, Seamus Callanan has gone back centre-forward. Lark Harvard has gone in the corner, but it looks to me he's going to come out and play out around the field and you know, look to use his pace to expose Michael Cavan. So Cavan is obviously going to stay back there. So we've another interesting tactic. And you have to credit Liam Sheedy. He's had a few ideas here and, you know, he's going to carry out the game plan. Well, let's see how, uh, how long they try that particular experiment and how successful it is. Conor O'Mahony now hitting this one, dropping dangerously in there. Well caught. That's Tennyson getting it away with the hand this time. Terrible clearance, however, putting uh, his colleague in difficulty because Kerwick has it. Back once again. This time it's towards John O'Brien, and John O'Brien walked away from it, wasn't one bit happy with that shot. Still to score, the uh, Toomey Barrow player. Well, he's an experienced man, John O'Brien, 27 years of age now. He's on the extended panel back in 2001, but didn't actually get to play in that final against Galway. PJ Ryan with the puck out, the Fenians man. Putting up the hand there was Declan Fanning, but it comes back to his colleague, kicked forward by Shane McGrath. In there towards Noel McGrath, they'll be hoping to get more from him or from Kerwick. Here's Kerwick's got a lot of pace, cleverly playing it inside to Callanan. Goal chance! Oh, save, a brilliant save. What a save! An amazing stop by PJ Ryan. Top drawer. Seamus Callanan had the goal at his mercy. Worth looking at again, there was a clever ball in by Pat Kerwick into Callanan, should have scored, but for the intervention of the marvellous PJ Ryan. Made that brilliant save against Waterford as well in the semi-final, and this is another candidate for save of the year. Yeah, a brilliant piece of play, but you have to say, look, Jackie Turrell, you know, out to the ball in front and then caught the ball, broke behind him, and Kerwick showed supervision. He did the same against... Uh, Limerick in the semi-final, he was involved in a couple of very clever passages of play, great ball to Callan, really a low ball into the corner, should have put it away and a uh, huge miss for Tipperary. Owen oh, Kelly got eight points out of uh, Tipperary's tally of 11 in the first half. This to put one between them. It's going left and it's gone wide. Yeah, Jaron and Tiff have it all, you know, John O'Brien a bad ride, that's a bad ride and a goal chance, you know, that's, you know, maybe four points on the board could be crucial now and uh, Tiff have started very, very well again in the second half but you can't afford to be missing chances like that against Kilkenny. PJ Ryan's puck out, this time targeting the right half forward, this time it's Tipperary who win that possession and it's Woodlock, the hump shoulders, getting it there towards Shane McGraw, whipping it across here towards Declan Fanning, running into traffic, forward towards Kerwick once again, made that lovely incisive run earlier, this time he's down injured, and the referee's got to halt the action, while well, attention can be given to the uh, Killinall player, known to his pals in Killinall as Festi, that was a terrific run, just moments earlier there by Pat Kerwick, he's taken his chance with both hands this past couple of games, Pat Kerwick are into a challenge there, which resulted him in ending on the deck. As you could see, it was Michael Rice. I think it was Rice who was coming in on top of him. So the uh, medical people just attending. Liam Sheedy certainly geeing up the crowd, supporting Tipperary. Meanwhile... Dr. Kevin Delargy from the Glens of Antrim, one of the team doctors in there to attend to the stricken Pat Kerwick. And there is a, a degree of concern you can see about that. Brian Cody, eight finals, ten years, what a record for the most successful manager in senior inter-county hurling. Yeah, here this we have save that again. Great, great flick across there by Pat Kerwick, great ball in. And fairness, Callan did nothing wrong. Super shot, but a great save by PJ Ryan. And he made a brilliant save from Owen Kelly in the Waterford game as well. We always say that Kilkenny goalkeepers never get enough saves to get an All-Star. Maybe this year. Although we have Brendan Cummins and a few others to offer stiff resistance. Right now, the main prize is the All-Ireland. That's far, far more important for all of these players. Here's James Woodlock. Had a support player ahead of him. 
didn't reach John O'Brien partly blocked by Michael Rice comes there to Owen Kelly who made a run out from full forward three players are after him gets the ball inside there towards Seamus Callan and fires it in off his left and puts it over the bar great score that was a hard work score by Tipperary and a first of the day for Seamus Callanan so a point eventually for one of those on the half forward line worked in cleverly Callanan took his chance great score one point the margin yeah, George, you have to say that Tipperary's half back line midfield are completely dominating now since half time, and, and their midfield, I think, were well on top in the first half. And you'd wonder when is Chaffet Patrick going to come into the play? Five and a half minutes into the second half. Paddy Stapleton back there. They're still trailing. Out by Conor O'Mahony. Poor ball. Dropped there by Tommy Welsh, who was absolutely word and foot perfect in the first half. This time, support coming from John Tennyson. Oh, they've given it away again and an opportunity for Tipperary to put it over the bar two in a row for Seamus Callanan the drum and inch player really comes alive in the second half well that time it was gifted to him anyway but his shooting was unerring yeah and I think the Kilkenny panel is going to be they're all talking about they're the second best team in the country well that's five points from playoff Brian Hogan Corbett got three in the first half Callanan has got two now how long more is he going to be left there? 13 points apiece and Conor O'Mahony marvellous centre half back that he is all-star last year this man has come of age in the last two years this was wonderful fielding taking it up there ahead of Henry Shefflin a doughty opponent the great player he is but uh, Conor O'Mahony was equal to it on this occasion good ball as far as Callanan fumbling holding on to it however again support arriving here that time Shane McGrath over his left shoulder hitting, hoping, watching it drop over the bar Shane McGrath from midfield gets his first and it's Tipperary who are back in front in the All-Ireland final once again 14-13 yeah, uh, look, Tip, Tipperary are worthy for that you know, they've won every ball since the start of the second half Kilkenny haven't got a ball past their half forward line and Tipperary are all over them and grown in confidence and winning that ball on the half-back line, Declan Fanning. Then clever use of the ball, not just belting it away anywhere. Pat Kerwick diagonally across. O'Brien fumbles. That's enough to give Michael Rice an opportunity. In fact, it's his midfield partner there who gets in to help out. Stalemate situation. Referee's going to throw the ball in. It was indeed Rice who was uh, doing the spade work that time. Anyway, the referee's going to throw the ball in between two players. Derek Ling and Shane McGrath reporting for duty comes out one-handed away by John O'Brien Jackie Terrell facing back towards his own goal gets the assistance there of Michael Kavanagh the St Lockton's player from Freshford in County Kilkenny huge one down there in there to challenge is Richie Parr a point scorer in the first half towards the very very end of that first half this time he's dragged back and it's going to be a free in for Kilkenny and a chance for them to tap over the equaliser in the uh, ninth minute of the second half yeah he's been pulled there not much doubt about it He's been pulled back and uh, he's won a couple of great balls in there because Parik Maher, one of his biggest strengths is uh, under the high ball and Richie's after catching a couple of great balls in there now. Well, it's good to see Richie coming alive in this particular championship match. He was superb in the league as Henry Shefflin puts over his first point of the second half from the free. All of his scores have come from place balls this afternoon and it's Kilkenny 14 points, Tipperary 14 points. This is the 15th All-Ireland final there has been between Kilkenny and Tip front of a packed crowd over 82,000 here in Croke Park short again to Paddy Stapleton further out as far as Declan Fanning and incrementally they get it in towards the forward line over the head of Noel McGrath coming to take it here is Lark over three points of the first half back in again that's why there was a glorious chance Owen Kelly that was saved again Ger but really Owen Kelly normally nine times out of ten that's in the back of the net and really Tipperary are leaving Kilkenny in this game now they should have two goals scored brilliant pass by Corbett and Owen had oh. more time I think he had more time than he thought it really was a superb save absolutely brilliant a brilliant change of direction by Larry Corbett he was looking one way and passed it the other way and Owen just maybe slipped there as well when he was taking the shot and still had to be saved by TJ Ryan quite amazing that we haven't had any goals in this final so far Owen Kelly's come out to take it 8 points his tally So, can Tip go back in front again? He's missed a 65 in the second half already. So now, has he the range? Has he got the direction? Has he the accuracy? The answer to all three questions, yes. Nine for Kelly, 15 for Tip. They lead by one. 
marvellous All-Ireland hurling final. PJ Ryan to pocket out. Gathered at half-back once again here. Out once again by Conor O'Mahony. Fed forward here towards John O'Brien. John O'Brien soloing forward. Rice is after him. Inside towards Pat Kerwick. Trying to turn back onto his left-hand side. Half hit that one. JJ Delaney under pressure. Gets the ball away despite the attentions there of Owen Kelly. But there are Tipperary players queuing up to take it. One of them is Woodlock. He is dispossessed brilliantly by Eddie Brennan. There as far as Tommy Welch. What taste, what drama we're watching here in Croke Park this afternoon. Wonderful, wonderful hurling. That ball away as far as Declan Fanning. Back once again into the mix there. Taken brilliantly by Michael Kavanagh, a commanding figure, playing today in his 10th All-Ireland Hurling Final. Getting it out into the middle as far as Derek Ling, feeding it forward there towards Aidan Fogarty, he hasn't scored so far, looking for his first score. Back out as far as Richie Hogan, got one in the first half, where will this land? It lands over the bar, it's a brilliant score. What a reply by Kilkenny, the champions. Marvellous score under pressure by the Danesford player, Richie Hogan a cousin of DJ Carey and the score 15 apiece and it's Tipperary who are about to make a change Benny Dunn coming in and John O'Brien the player who is the first to be replaced in this All-Ireland final he'll be disappointed while Benny Dunn I'm sure is just itching to get into the action he's got his opportunity he's got time 15 apiece. Who's going to win it? Michael Rice blocked down there brilliantly by Shane McGrath. Comes back towards Seamus Caledon. On the ground. Helped out here again. And the referee saw a foul there. And it's got to be a free to Tipperary. Well, the referee has uh, noted names in this match so far. Hasn't shown any yellow cards. Yeah, no, you know, I think the best you could say, Kilkenny are hanging in there. The, the, since half time, the 12 minutes since half time, Kilkenny have, Tipperary have absolutely dominated the game, but still Kilkenny are level, and I think they'll take a bit of comfort They've from that. They've confounded a lot of what people have been saying at half time, where I've been hearing that uh, you know it's only a matter of time before Kilkenny become the assertive force that we know they are. That's it's not Tipperary gonna, who It's not going to happen today. Tipperary are a very, very fit team. Um, they're, going, they're young, they're hungry, and you know the longer they stay in it, the better. But they have missed those couple of goal chances, which might work against them in the end. This one is pointed by Owen Kelly, point number 10 of the afternoon, his second of the second half, and his Tipperary 16 points, Kilkenny 15. Kilkenny were the favourites coming in, why wouldn't they be? They've won it for the last three years. People everywhere and anywhere were looking for a right good challenge to come from Tipperary, and Tipperary have served up that wonderful challenge. Now who's going to win it? A way out of defence by Paul Curran, the school teacher based in Clonmel. Gets it out here as far as the left half back, John Tennyson. The other left half for Tipperary, Brendan Marr, racing out there with Henry Shefflin, the 20 year old against the pass master of All Ireland finals. What a pick up by Henry Shefflin. Beautiful skill inside towards Richie Power. Breaks loose to Porik Maher. Under pressure from a group of Kilkenny players. One of them manages to foul him. Maher's on the ground. It's got to be a free out for Tipperary. A match which has absolutely everything, except goals. I think he's got for getting hit very hard there as well. Well, let's just have a look at this again and see what did happen to young Porik Maher. Oh yeah, the elbow was there as well. It was well, Aidan Fogarty yeah, coming it was Aiden across. Yeah, and you know, in fairness, there was, but he not dipped, necessarily he dipped, intentional. Well, no, I think he dipped his head a bit just going into the tackle. Yeah. If, you, if you look at it, in, if you look at it in the replay, but he got hit very, very hard. And yeah, he seems to be in a lot of in a lot of discomfort there. And you remember back, Michael, to the uh, monster final, Tipperary against Waterford, and the difficulties that Tipperary had in their full back line this up that afternoon. I mean, they took Paul Curran off. You remember? They did, yeah. But this is um. Maybe it's, it's part of the modern game, but maybe, you know, don't like to see too much of... Teams are so strong now and so physical, and there's a lot of that sort of... Lads are coming out, and there's players coming in very, very hard from all angles, and, you know, you are going to situations, but he's back on his feet, thankfully. There's got to be a change, and TJ Reid's got to come on for Aidan Fogarty. So he becomes the first change made by the Kilkenny manager. And that is interesting, because people might have expected that Chaff Fitzpatrick, or Martin Comerford in particular, would have been the first in. But it's uh, TJ Reid has come in. 
He got four points, remember, in the All-Ireland final last year against Waterford when he came on as a substitute. Let's see what he can do today. 16-15, Tipperary leading. Broken down towards Noel McGrath. Helped here towards Seamus Callanan. Under pressure immediately from Kilkenny. And Kilkenny have the ball. And Jackie Tyrrell in particular getting it away down the field towards Richie Power. Reaching up for it, a recovered Porik Maher. That's brilliant by the young fullback. Listen to the Tipperary fans as he gets that ball into the inside forward line once again. Rolling it up under the stick there was Jackie Turrell trying to do so. It's a stalemate situation. Referee allows it to develop. It's still developing and it comes out to Kerwick. Kerwick can't do anything with it. Brian Hogan has it. Spooning it back there towards JJ Delaney. Under pressure from Noel McGrath. Poor clearance. Out it comes into the middle and it's Woodlock across towards a free player. It's Benny Dunn going over there, the new man in. Having to go around a number of players, around Eddie Brennan in particular. Back towards Kerwick it comes. Now what kind of progress can they make from this attack? That's the shot and that's a poor final effort by Pat Kerwick and he is yet to score in this final. Yeah. Lot of hard work, no end product. And going back to... The And Michael Fennelly, who is the team captain, now gets his chance to come into midfield. And Derek Ling makes way. Yeah, I think that the, the thinking of Brian Cody here is TJ Reid and Michael Fennelly are younger players. They have a lot of taste and maybe you no know, Martin Comfort. That's what they're lacking. They're getting bet for every 50 50 ball all over the field. And he's looking to inject a bit of life into the team. Well, it happened with Tyrone a couple of weeks ago against Cork. And it might well be happening for Kilkenny as well. But they have a lot of time. We're in the 17th minute of the second half. Lark Corbett from a huge distance. He can do little wrong this afternoon. He's on a roving commission way out the field. Three points in the first half. Make it now four. And it's 17 points to 15. Four shots. Four points from Lar. Through the middle, the puck out comes. Picked up here in the centre by the racing Eddie Brennan. Three points in the first half was his tally. Needs assistance into the centre here to Michael Fennelly. Fennelly striking from 45 metres out and wanting to lay down a marker immediately. Good score. That's one back. One point between them and a match which hasn't produced any goals so far, but there's still plenty of time. Midway through the second half. Yeah, that was great play by Eddie Brennan, but you notice he was covered by the three temporary players and Shane McGrath's pace came into play there and he had to play it back outside. He did very well. Martin Comerford will be coming in, it seems, very shortly. The short puck out of here as far as Brendan Maher. From left half back, it's cut out across over there and delivered back down into the danger area towards TJ Reid. Well, can he exert the same kind of influence? You might remember back to 2007, by the way, Richie Parr came on as a sub then as well. He also got four points in that final. Yeah, but in those finals, you know, maybe the games were rum when they came yeah, on. They now were. the pressure is on now to deliver. It's easy to come on when you're 10 or 12 Absolutely. times up and score a few points. The line ball to be taken by Brendan Maher from Borussia Catches it really well. It flies through the air into the half forward. Oh. That was a wild swipe there. And the referee is going to take action against Benny Dunn, I think. Now Benny, had, very definitely the guilty party. But the greatest of credit to Tommy Walsh. He's straight back up on his feet. I think a lot of other players would have stayed down, but it's still a red card, John. It's a red card. <laughs> Tipperary lose their substitute, Benny Dunn, and will play out the remaining minutes of this match with 14 men. Well, nobody wants to see it, as you say. Tommy Walsh got back up onto his feet immediately, but the uh, foul blow penalised by the referee Dermot Kerwin and Liam Sheedy has to battle now with one man less yeah he was a long way away from the ball now we haven't seen a replay of it yet but a, 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 a re it was a reckless pull and uh, you know you don't like to see any player being sent off in the Ireland final and to Tommy Walsh got back up on his feet straight away as well not hurt but uh, he did strike that's off the ball that's not the point that's not the point no, no. strike off the ball Henry Shefflin hitting this one from the free and putting it over the bar it's a magnificent shot by Henry Shefflin from such a huge distance Seven points for yeah, Shefflin. You see, Watch this Tommy again. Pulled straight across. Oh. Oh, very dangerous. Straight into the face. And I think Tommy Walsh just showed if anyone wanted the toughness that we just got. He went down, got straight back up on his feet, didn't in any way try to get the player sent off, but he had to go for that. 
That's back out as far as Brendan Maher from the puck out. Now Tipperary really have it all to do, and it's going to be a free in. That time Owen Kelly fouled. Free in for Owen Kelly, a chance for him to get his 11th point of this final. Yeah, and I think there's been three or four of those incident balls like that since half time, and Tip have won the freeze. Rightly so, maybe they've been held back, but in the first half they weren't getting them. So maybe yellow Liam card Sh- here. Liam Sheedy's um, for JJ it, Delaney. Liam Sheedy's intervention at half time maybe has unsettled their McCarran a little bit Could and made well. him look a bit closer at those incidents. I'm not trying to make excuses for Benny Dunn because it was a very, very foul blow, as you say. But I think he was frustrated sitting on the bench, waiting for his chance to come out, show what he could do. Unfortunately, he was probably too pumped up. Probably was. It happens. Owen Kelly to strike this. He's going to go for the goal, I think. OK, Mystic Meg Dignan's at it again. It's slightly at an angle. It's not absolutely central. It's saved. And once again, PJ Ryan makes a magnificent stop. OK, he had support behind him and he went for it, but it was a good save. Three saves in the second half now by PJ Ryan. First class, each one of them and it remains at 17 points apiece. Well, Kelly would know what he's doing there, Jerry. No, he knows with the power he has, if it's saved, good chance to go over the bar out for 65, and you know, now he has a chance to tap it over. Unless he misses the 65, there's nothing lost, really. There's still about 14 minutes left in this final. The last drawn final, exactly 50 years ago. I think Kilkenny will be amazed they're still in this game. They're, you know, Unlimited possession, it's a draw match. It's nearly unbelievable. It's just their vast experience, and, and they're sticking it out. So from the 65 centrally positioned straight over it's Tipperary 18 it's Kilkenny 17 and that's 11 points for Kelly which is you know really showing his back to full form 7 frees 2 65s and 2 from play an unbelievable return well the scoring chances already in the second half in the opening 22 minutes Tipperary have created 13 scoring chances against just four for Kilkenny. That tells its own story. This is rolled up brilliantly by Owen Kelly. What a match he's playing. Great to see him back. Will it curl in sufficiently inside that left-hand post? The umpires look at it, decide yes. Great score. Another from play for Kelly. That's 12 out of 19. What a match. Two between them. The 14 men are beating the champions of the past three years. Is the four in a row still on? Plenty of time. Wonderful tension, wonderful enjoyment everywhere and anywhere. Great displays. Lots of young people, lots of new names coming to the fore this year. Brendan Maher has come up from the underage ranks, ready to cut this one now beautifully in he's made a good 40 meters Brian Hogan catches this one drives the ball away down by Fanning that time picked up here well by Richie Power well chased after by Shane McGrath and Shane McGrath drives it in but he puts it to the right might have been a little bit more patient and more accurate with his delivery because Owen Kelly was waiting for a decent ball in he is, but he's having some game and Michael Kavanagh, Michael Kavanagh has been deployed as the extra man. There's Benny Dunn sitting up in the stand, and I'm sure he's very, very disappointed. But Michael Kavanagh, I don't like cornerbacks being the extra men because he's back there and nobody knows who to go, for, you know, who should go for the ball. And sometimes it works against. I think he should move somebody up front and go for the juggler. And here is that extra man that you were talking about, and he's under pressure immediately from Seamus Callanan. And this one off the post and over the bar. A little bit of help required, but Seamus Callanan has hit three points in the second half. And that was an error by Michael Kavanagh. He should have got the ball away. He had time. But the sheer eagerness, sheer anticipation and never-say-die attitude of Tipperary is now very much coming to the fore. They have players who are prepared to die for the calls this afternoon. Young and old. There's one of the youngsters, 18-year-old Noel McGrath. Bit of a rush of blood to the head the way he hit that one, however. And that is now a total of eight wides. They still lead by three. And they've really dominated the second half all over the field. And, you know, I think Kenny are just going to have to bring on somebody up front and throw caution to the wind because they don't look like scoring a goal at all at this stage, but you never know with Kilkenny, but at this stage, Tipperary are all over them. And once again, that ball is knocked away by Conor O'Mahony. Not terribly far. Here's TJ Reid. 
looking to make the impact that he made 12 months ago. Great looking delivery and over the bar. TJ Reid emulating what Michael Fennelly, another sub, did earlier on, getting among the scores. So two points the difference. It's 20 points to 18. TJ Reid with his first. Yeah, it's a brilliant score again from Reid, and that's what Kilkenny have done all day. They've, they've hardly missed a chance that they've had. They've missed none in the second half. Five from five. Five from five. They're, you know, they're just sticking in there and showing their class. Kerwick with a great catch. That's brilliant. Going by Tennyson, angling the shot in into the side netting. Ten minutes to go. Yeah, maybe that's three or four wides now. You know, from, from Tipperary, from from difficult positions, they're better off to keep it into Corbett and Kelly inside. Both of them are on fire, and all they should be doing is just playing the ball into those two all the time. Will Kilkenny add to their 31 titles so far? Will Tip get their 26th? Coming through here, Henry Shefflin. And that one is over the bar somehow. Eight for Henry Shefflin. Rivaling Owen Kelly, who's got 12 so far for the individual scoring honour of the day. But it's all about taking the Liam McCarthy Cup. One between them. And Jerry, you have to remember the resolve with Kilkenny. You know, as I said a few times already, they're sticking in there. Martin Comfort, their lovely ball, but Shefflin was an impossible angle. TJ Reid's previous score. You know, and they're just they're showing what they're made of. Great champions, and even though they've been under pressure for most of the game, they're still in it. Noel McGrath hitting this one, and Noel McGrath has put it over the bar. His opening score. When he hit that one over Tipperary, we're actually down to. 13 men because Declan Fanning was down with an injury with a cramp he's back on his feet again it's 21-19 and it's absolutely thrilling hope you're enjoying it TJ Ryan ready to take this the 32 year old goalkeeper very intelligent hurling by McGrath he, he ran 70 yards across the field to take that ball oh that a slip by Conor O'Mahony here's an opportunity fed inside there in for power trying to get away from the attentions of a couple of players one of them Paul Curran and it's a penalty and they go out straight away to remonstrate with referee Dermot Kerwin. That was interesting. Where did that happen? I took that look. I think it looked very harsh. I think Comerford gave the ball a bit too early and put power under pressure. And he was trying to burrow his way through. We'll have to have another look at it now. But it looked like he ran out. I, I just serious he, questions about that. He was running out of space. There will be twice as many serious questions if he scores it. Well, the first happen foul happened outside for sure. Here's Comerford through now. Passed the ball that little bit early, I thought. There's power. He's held up there, not a whole lot wrong with that, hurling over the neck. Oh, he just about made the large square eventually. Yeah, but you'd even doubt was it a free, you know. Well, it is a penalty, and it's Henry Shefflin who's going to take it. There are three on the goal line. Porik Maher, Brendan Commons is there as well, and also Conor O'Mahony. Commons is ready, yes. Shefflin is as well. He's got eight points so far. They need it! It's in the back of the net! Henry Shefflin cracks in his 22nd ever championship goal and it's 119 to 21 points 22 21 the goal coming in the 63rd minute yeah an absolute rocket rocket from Shefflin straight well, over the head of Parik Maher and no, there's no seven in that it'll be a big big talking point however the award of the penalty now will that energise Kilkenny who were giving second best, but were never prepared to give way completely to Tipperary. Back come the team looking for four in a row. Back comes Owen Larkin. One point so far. In for Coverford. It's in the back of the net. Two in a row. The game has turned around, and the substitute, Martin Comerford, scores in the 64th minute. It's two goals, one from a penalty, one from play in the space of 60 seconds and it has turned around the 2009 All-Ireland Hurling Final and Kilkenny feel they're on their way to victory. There's still six minutes to play. Heartbreak for Tipperary, but full credit to the commitment and the character of Kilkenny not to mention their marvellous skill. Henry Shefflin with a goal and eight points so far. Having a go from an enormous distance out. Brendan Cummins. There's only four points between them. And Tipperary are shattered right now, but they've got to remain composed. They have time. 14 against 15, five minutes left. And maybe a little bit more with added time. So perhaps there's as much as seven minutes still left in this final. Yeah, and Joe... I <laughs> 
That's uh, Henry Shefton I've been spoken to by the ref, but, but a few minutes ago there, I said about maybe Kilkenny that looking like scoring a goal, and this is what makes them special. Now, the free was fortuitous. At best, it was, you know, it was a, it was a 50-50 ball. Uh, great goal by Shefton. Then straight away, but what a pass by Owen Larkin into Comerford, and great finish, and, uh, you know, as you say, they're temporarily can't panic. They've had a few chances. They need to just plug away now and try to stay in this game. Owen Kelly ready to hit this. He's already got 12 points. Pat Kerwick has just gone off. Willie Ryan's just come on. He's also the team captain, of course. Oh, miss hit completely. Straight to Michael Rice. And Rice will look that gift and take it with him deep out of the Kilkenny half. Lashing it down towards Richie Power. Races beyond him. Runs it there. Picking it up here, Paddy Stapleton. He's tripped, went over the outstretched legs of Richie Power. Free to Tipperary. Well, that was baffling there, that miss hit by Owen Kelly. It's going to be a free, which Brendan Cummins will take. 66 minutes approaching, gone in the game. 20 metres out from the Kilkenny goal. Tommy Walsh somehow got that ball again. Fed out as far as the centre-half back, Brian Hogan. Slipped out here as far as Michael Fennelly. From a famed Fennelly fan, family down in uh, Ballyhale and... County Kilkenny of course, here's Owen Larkin trying to make an angle for himself man who made the second goal well that one's gone wide the seconds tick away however four wides for Kilkenny haven't played as well as they played in uh, the last couple of finals but then Tipperary didn't let them yeah I think they played very well I think it's been a great game but just Tipperary brought a fierce challenge here and you know, they're still in this game certainly are as Lark Orba tries to open it up here Willie Ryan couldn't take it up, but it's picked up instead by another man with a yellow helmet. That is Seamus Callanan. Feeding it in towards Noel McGrath. Could he yet be the star? Oh, that went off the stick of the goalkeeper and it's gone over the bar. And Noel McGrath's got a second. But PJ Ryan wasn't taking any chances and tapped it over as well. And there are three points between them. 25-22 or 219 to 22 points. This was Noel McGrath again. Watch for the goalkeeper deciding best uh, course of action is just to help it over yeah and he's very sharp today that's three or four times he's been called on and hasn't been found wanting oh we're going to have a very very tense conclusion to this wonderful final there's Jackie Terrell and Terrell trying to get among the scores and why not Jackie Terrell puts it over the bar it's only his second ever championship point is it now going to ensure victory for the Cats it's a brilliant score by Terrell, but I think he's lucky he went on oh, Larkin here again now. Larkin now, the more composed Kilkenny players, but that final effort leaving a lot to be desired. Well, the previous ball, when Terrell put it over, Larkin was on his own inside Roanford, but uh, Terrell, great score from 90 yards, 100 yards. A couple of untypical errors have been made in the last 5-10 minutes. So much tension about the place. The prize a huge one. Lark Orbit, what a match he's played. Four points. Oh, he's given it away to Tommy Welsh. Tommy, who's been a star all through. Way down there. Collected once again by Brendan Maher. Or by Aporic Maher, I should say. His namesake. Staying on his feet there, just about was Callan and into Woodlock. Woodlock trying to engineer it. Score for Tipperary. Just a minute and a half of the 70 still to go. There's got to be another change, and it'll be Mihal Webster who will come in. So a chance for him to do something as a replacement for James Woodlock. Is there a goal yet in Tipperary? Owen Kelly ready to hit this one, some 50 metres from the target. Straight once again, nicely accurate, and just over the bar. 13 points for Owen Kelly. Is it going to be enough, however? Three points the margin. There's confirmation of the uh, latest change by Tipperary, who trail by three. Final minute. And now it's a case of how many minutes will be added on by the referee as added time. Collected in the middle of the park by Martin Comerford once again, the man who was left out of the team at the start of the game and was bitterly disappointed to have suffered that fate. But he came back and got the second goal and maybe the crucial one for the Cats. Who knows? 
flying in there once again Webster couldn't take it comes out towards Brian Hogan there'll be two added minutes to be played so two minutes and 20 seconds still to go of the 2009 final that's a huge one down towards Eddie Brennan this time stymied however by Paul Curran the cornerback fouled on his way out Tipperary want to get the ball away quickly it'll be Brendan Cummins who will take the free out they need a goal three points between the teams huge one dropping 20 meters out from the Kilkenny goal Hogan goes up for it is there a goal in Tipperary yet the backs combining well coming out to take it here the marvelous Tommy Welch out as far as Michael Cavan who's had a free roll since the sending off of Benny Dunn dropped there by Declan Fanning collected here by Owen Larkin we're into stoppage time a minute and 40 seconds still to be played Larkin dancing away from the challenge of Paddy Stapleton and driving it over the bar two for Owen Larkin in this final another for Kilkenny they stretch the lead to four points it's 221 to 23 points and we're in the 71st minute it's another brilliant score by Larkin you know at this stage of the game to have that type of pace and power unbelievable this time it's John Tennyson another man with a red helmet on the half back line getting it out there as far as TJ Reid huge one back down towards Eddie Brennan batted out there by Porik Maher the full back for Tipperary has played his heart out looks to be tiring however this time it's collected by Richie Power and Kilkenny have time they have the lead they have the ball as well to Owen Larkin and they have a point and Larkin's got a third and surely now that's a winning score surely now the champions of the last three years are not going to be denied by a late goal by Tipperary it's looking like four in a row it's looking like a repeat of what Cork did in the early 40s from 1941 to 1944 except this time it's Brian Code who's done it Brian Cody's already got Six All-Ireland victories, ten Leinsters, five National Leagues and 11 seasons. Surely the most successful manager there has ever been of a senior inter-county hurling team. Brendan Marr cutting it in. Tip will believe there is still some hope if they can get a goal. But they need more than a goal at this stage. They're behind by five points. They need two. They have possession. Porik Maher. The two minutes have almost now been played by match referee Dermot Kerwin. That bounces back out here again towards McGrath. Comes back once again and it's collected by Tommy Welch. Tommy Welch has the ball. Kilkenny have the trophy. It's Kilkenny who are the All-Ireland champions for 2009. They are the first team to do four in a row since the 1940s. They've come from a position where they look to be a losing team at the early stages of the second half. But Brian Cody's team had character. They had key players in key areas. They had leaders all over the field. They've shown us what marvellous hurlers they are. Tipperary, to give them their due, gave it everything they had. I've no doubt in my mind there's an All-Ireland in this Tipperary team. The tears are falling from young eyes at this stage. Tipperary eyes. But Tipperary can be proud because they put it up to the Cats this afternoon. And we had a memorable final at Croke Park. Shane McGrath played his heart out but there was the one team a little better this afternoon and that was Kilkenny So Christy Cooney, the GEA president, handing over the Liam McCarthy Cup, fourth year in a row to a Kilkenny captain, Liam Fennelly. And that, Michael Fennelly rather. Brian Cody, all of Kilkenny, celebrating four in a row.